So you're the CEO of one of the largest solar companies in the entire country. So what has been the most amount of money that you've ever made in a single year? My business has done, did 149 million last year and we should do double that this year. So you're on track to do about 300 million this Correct. year. Meet Zane Jane. Over the last four years, he's built one of the largest solar companies in the entire world and become one of the most successful entrepreneurs across the United States. However, it didn't start out that way. Zane grew up living in poverty and was a son to two immigrant parents, but he decided he ultimately wanted to create a new destiny for himself. And through learning the ins and outs and mastering the game of entrepreneurship, at 16 years old, he started his first business. By the time he was 19, he dropped out of school and at 20 years old, he had built a multi-million dollar company. Fast forward to now, now, at 27 years old, the company he started from scratch is on track to do $300 million this year. In this interview, Zane revealed to me some of the most lucrative secrets to creating wealth that he's learned as a nine-figure entrepreneur that school will not teach you. I'm James Dumlin, and this is Questions with Millionaires. All right, you guys, welcome back to Questions with Multimillionaires. We got a very special guest today, Zane, who's the CEO of a massive solar company out here in Miami, Florida. And before we get into some questions today, Zane, give us a little bit of your background, your story, and what all you're working on right now. Yeah, so I'm the CEO of a solar company. Uh, I have over 600 W-2 employees, over 3,000 sales reps that sell through us, and we're one of the largest residential solar installers in the country. However, that's not how I started. I started growing up, uh, you know, lower class. My family didn't speak English. They were first-generation immigrants to this country. And uh, yeah, you know, life's always been really hard, but at 18 years old, I decided to make a decision to go all into sales, master the art of sales. That's what led me to get into solar sales. And fast forward, I went from being a salesperson, a sales leader to a business owner, and here, here we are today. That's incredible. So you're the CEO of one of the largest solar companies in the entire country. So what has been the most amount of money that you've ever made in a single year? My business has done, did 149 million last year, and we should do double that this year. So you're on track to do about 300 million this Correct, year. Correct, yeah. What was the biggest thing that you've implemented in your business to take it from not only seven to eight, but eventually eight to nine figures? A lot of people in today's world, they'll have a great idea, they'll start that business, but they struggle to scale and grow. What's been your secret to scaling your business to where it's now a nine figure company? To get to seven figures, you need a really good idea and really good sales and marketing. To get to eight figures, you need a really good team. If you have the right people around you, you'll be able to get to eight figures. But to get to nine figures is one of the hardest things to do. You not only need a really good product, you need really great marketing, you need really great sales, you need a really great team, but most importantly, you need systems. You need SOPs, standard operating procedures. In my company, there's a standard operating procedure for everything we do. Uh, and this is a little bit of a joke and exaggerated, but there's legitimately a standard operating procedure if you wanna to go to the bathroom or if you wanna make coffee. The whole point of that is for every system and function in the business, it has to be documented. Because if it is documented, that means that if I get sick today, I can pass my colleague that document and they can actually do my work function. So therefore, you are no longer relying on me. And when you are an eight-figure business owner, a lot of times people are still relying on the CEO. But when you become a nine-figure business owner, people aren't just relying on the CEO anymore. They're relying on the machine and the system. So the CEO could die, but the machine and the system will continue to scale. So to me, that's where most people get stuck at that eight-figure range. That's incredible. There's a famous quote that says, the poor get poorer and the rich often get richer. But for someone who may be stuck in that cycle of poverty, right? You, for example, you, you didn't come from a lot of money. You didn't have- At all, yeah. Exactly. And so for someone who may be stuck in that cycle, what do you recommend to them to really break out of that cycle of poverty and they want to become successful and maybe build a successful company like they're- Number one, you can't get rich being in a poor environment. So make enough money to move. That's it. Like if you're in a poor environment, like you're going to stay poor. I don't care what anyone says. Like you, you're not going to build a billion dollar business living in a lower class neighborhood. Like just not going to happen. You're just not going to have the mental fortitude. You're not going to have the ability to meet the right people. You're not going to have any connections. You're going to go out there. You're going to be demotivated and depressed. Why? Because you're in a shithole at the end of the day. So if you're 14, 15, work on your skills because you got no choice until you're 18. You know that you're in there, but as soon as you turn 18, you're ready to move out of your home because you've built up some money. You've invested in skill sets. Maybe you got really good at sales and marketing. Now you've made enough to move into a bigger city like Miami or Boston or New York or Los Angeles or Dubai, right? You can move into a city and you look around and you're like, dude, there's hundreds of billions of dollars in this city just sitting here right now in this one city. I come from this small little town that's a shithole, but in this city, it all exists out there. So I gotta get closer to the money, right? If I grow up in an environment where everyone's making 40K a year, 
well, I'm not really close to the money. I'm close to everyone making 40 grand a year. If I go into a city and there's a pretty good chance within a 30 mile radius, I have, you know, 14 billionaires and I have, you know, thousand, uh, tens of thousands of multimillionaires. Well, now if I want to build a business in that area and I want to get money, what am I? I'm closer to the money. So the chances of me making more money are significantly higher. So if you're stuck in that, in that you know, rat race, you're stuck in the situation of poverty or you're paycheck to paycheck, do everything you can to save your money, not to go and invest in real estate or the stock market or something of that nature, but first thing you should invest in is yourself and the best thing that you can invest in. And this is before anything else. The only thing I would put before this is like maybe your education and yourself and you know, go and buy a sales course or a marketing course and become a good Facebook ads guy or a good high ticket closer, sure. Those are skill sets you can invest in. But before buying the nicest car, or the nicest watch, or those clothes that you like, or even buying gifts for your friends and family. Invest your money into moving to a place where every day when you walk outside, you have a view. And you have a view of a city, you have a view of money, you have a view of an economy that's moving. You guys were just telling me, oh, we love being in Miami because there's so much stuff going on. Yeah, imagine driving out in the city and you see this and you see that guy and you see that car and you see that business and you see that celebrity. You start to get inspired and it makes you wanna work harder. But if I walk outside and all I see is a beat down tennis court, um, I see a beat down uh, uh, park, I see all these homes with broken windows, people walking around in the postman. Like, I'm not, I'm not excited. I'm not happy. I'm not motivated. I just want to go back home and I want to play Xbox because that's way more exciting to me than walking outside my house. But when I walk outside, I'm like, dude, I no longer need to play Grand Theft Auto. Why? Because I live in Grand Theft Auto every single sure. day. And that's the mentality you need to have. And that's what, like, listen, like, I'm just, I'm being very real. Like when I was 14, I needed to hear that because I was stuck in that environment and I got so lucky that I left at 18 years old. It was not a plan. But if I had just stayed comfortable and I did not move away from where I was, I'm convinced if I just stayed there for two or three more years, I never would have left. And that would have changed my entire life and no one would know who I was today. Wow, it's incredible. That was a phenomenal answer from Zane and his best business game is yet to come. But I wanna take a quick second to thank AG1 for sponsoring this video. As you all know, we're always traveling the country to deliver this content for you guys. And because of that, it can be very challenging to make sure I get the right amount of nutrients in during the day. Drinking AG1 has been the foundational nutrient habit that I needed, especially while on the going on workout days, it replenishes my daily micronutrients. It's been crucial for my routine. AG1 travel packs make it easy to stay committed to your intentions wherever you are and when you need it the most. Running a full-time business can be stressful at times and drinking AG1 has been great for reducing stress and boosting mental clarity. AG1 helps me keep sustained energy throughout the day and improve my focus. AG1 has been a game changer, so make sure you go to drinkag1.com dash the school of hard knocks to get started on your order. AG1 is going to give our community a free one-year supply of AG vitamin D3 and K2 and five AG1 travel packs for free with your first purchase. So thank you to AG1 for sponsoring this video. And with that being said, let's get back to Zane. You know, what's been the importance of surrounding yourself with the right people throughout your career? You know, how have you really been able to leverage relationships in the business world? And what advice would you give to someone who's really trying to build that network? Maybe they don't have the best interpersonal skills, but they want to get really better at networking, connecting with people. What's been the importance of it for you? And what do you recommend to someone who's trying to get better at that? The hard truth is no one will give a fuck about you if you don't have something. It's the hard truth. Like, very rarely do you run into someone that's very successful that's just like a super nice guy and it's like, listen, I don't know who you are, you're from the street, blah, 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 you're not successful, but I'm gonna take you on, I'm gonna teach you everything. Not because they're not nice people, but to their right, they have to focus on what's gonna add a value in their life. And if you are a human being that does not provide value, there's no reason that someone should give you value. So when people, people always ask me this question because I am a phenomenal networker and I know almost everyone and I have great relationships, friendships with athletes, celebrities, CEOs, business owners, Fortune 100 owners. And how I got there wasn't by just being in the right rooms. That's a part of it. But how did I get into the right rooms? Well, I built myself up so that one day someone invited me into those rooms. Now when I get into that room, I can have that conversation and they know that most likely if you're in that room, 
you're someone of high caliber and stature, so you can hold a conversation with them and you can talk to them about things that are relatable. And what do I do when I'm around someone that's more successful than me? And this happens to me quite frequently. I shut up. I don't ask them a million questions. I don't ask them for advice. I don't ask them to help me. Not because I don't want it, but because I know I have not earned their respect or value yet. I have to get them to come to me willingly and want to pour it onto me. So I will always just either talk about fun stuff, stuff that I know that's gonna engage and excite them, or I'm gonna give them back tons of value or ask them if I can do something for them. But the real question is 18 year old Zane, he was never gonna meet the people that he's met today. And he wasn't just gonna walk up to them, run into them and build a great connection. Even if you do, even if you run into a billionaire in the street, you run into Elon in the street, you meet him, you get to do a video with him, you get to talk to him, that's cool, right? And maybe it's great for content and maybe it changes your life in that way, but there's no way that Elon's giving you your, your phone number. There's no way that he's answering your call or talking to you. So you gotta work your way up to that point. So I would just recommend work on yourself become a more valuable version. And if you wanna be around more valuable people, you have to value yourself and become valuable. That's number one. Number two is, it's not just about who you hang out with, it's about who you don't hang out with. That's the really important factor. If I'm around a group of bums that don't take care of themselves, aren't successful, don't work on themselves, you know, are always getting fucked up and partying and doing drugs, well, not only am I eventually gonna become like that if I keep hanging around them, but other people are gonna be like, I don't wanna hang around Zane. Not because Zane's not a great guy, but because the four buddies that he's hanging around are bringing him down. They don't provide any value to our group, so I'm not even gonna invite him because I know he's gonna be with his four buddies. And that happens to people every day. Unfortunately, it happens to people that know me. I don't wanna hang out with them, not because of them, but because I know the crew that they bring along with them brings a massive amount of negativity. And this has nothing to do with financial success, by the way. I'm not looking at that in any case. I know a lot of people that are extremely financially well off, but they entertain in drugs all day, they party every weekend. So I just know like, dude, I'm not trying to hang out with the guy that's gonna go out with us tonight and is gonna have a line of Coke. Like that just, it's not in my environment anymore. I'm over that stuff. I did that stuff when I was younger. I'm at a point in my life where I only wanna surround myself with people that are very positive and are all focused on growth. When I sit at a dinner table with my friends, I want those conversations to be about how are we gonna help each other? How are we all gonna make more money? How, what's this crazy new idea? I was talking to my buddy the other day. His name's Dr. D, he's a great Miami doctor, one of the best celebrity doctors in the world. And he was telling me about this invention that he had. He had this insane, crazy invention. We were talking about it and I was like, dude, one day when you come up with that and you make that prototype, I will invest in you and I wanna build that idea with you. Those are the type of conversations that I want at my dinner table. I don't want like, bro, did you see that girl? Dude, did you see this fucking thing? Did you go to this party? Did you talk to this person? It's like, this stuff's bullshit. There's no substance there. There's no value there. I want conversations with value. So like I said, it's not just about who you hang around with and what rooms you get in, but it's who you don't hang around with. So you've got hundreds of millions of dollars coming into the company that you're dealing with. Correct. But what's been the best financial advice that you ever received throughout your lifetime? If there's one lesson that a mentor or somebody taught you about money that's always stuck for you, what is that advice? Spend your money. Everyone is gonna be like, what? Everyone says save your money, save your money, hoard it in the bank account. No, the only way that you can build something is by pouring into it. It's like, imagine if you had a brand new Bugatti parked downstairs, but there was no gas tank to put fuel in. So you literally couldn't drive it. That's exactly what a bank account's like. You have a $5 million bank account that's not working for you. It's literally like a Bugatti with no gasoline. You can't drive it. It's like an art piece. Like you're just gonna look at it and it's gonna uh, deteriorate in value every single year. So. What I tell business owners, and this is the biggest mistake that so many people make, is when you have money in your bank account, do not look at it as something to protect you. Look at it as something to make you more money and make you more successful. I get so anxious when we look at our bank account and there's so much money in there. Why? Because I'm like, what are we doing with this? We don't need this right now. We have all of our expenses, our operating costs, everything is taken care of, payroll is made, let's put this money to work because if I can put that money to work, I'm gonna do two things. Number one, I'm gonna create more value in my business, which is the most important and essential thing that I can do. Why? Because a majority of my net worth lies in my business. So every dollar I'm putting in, it's just going into building this asset that holds a majority of my net worth. Number two is, 
it makes you operate differently as a business. When you're cush as a business and you know that you have money that makes you feel comfortable, you don't necessarily make the same decisions. Maybe you could have made your business a little bit more efficient and profitable, but you didn't because you knew that you had this savings, right? Or maybe you needed to go and hit this sales target, but you didn't push your team far enough. Why? Because you had this cushion and you had this money saved. But when you're constantly reinvesting your money back into your business and into yourself, well, you end up draining your bank account. What do you got to do? You got to keep making it over and over again. So those are my fundamentals and principles with money. I will never, ever hoard my money. I will always put it back into something. So my next question for you, you've sold uh, hundreds of millions of dollars in revenue throughout your career, probably billions now. What's been your secret to sales throughout your career? How have you been able to consistently sell your products at a high volume, regardless of the industries that you've been in? I don't care what anyone says. You could have amazing persuasion tactics. You could learn NLP, by the way, I hate NLP. Um, you could learn all of these different skills and tactics. There's one thing in sales that will make you beat every other salesperson, and that's conviction in your product. If you believe in your product, you don't need a script. You don't need special training. You don't need objection handling. Now, don't get me wrong. Those things are important. All of my sales guys have a script. All of them handle objections. All of them do role plays. That's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is the tactics are 10% of it. 90% of it is believing in your product. If I had two salespeople next to me, one of them trained tactics, objections, but didn't believe in the product. The other one, zero training, absolute rookie, but believed in the product. I take the person that believes in the product 10 times out of 10. Why? Because conviction is everything. When you're sitting in front of a sales cycle or you're on the phone, people can feel your enthusiasm, your excitement, and your belief in your product. And if they don't feel it, they will not buy. So whenever I look at a salesperson, I am never judging them by how they talk or what they say. I'm judging them by what's their conviction and belief in their product. And I don't need a special you know, tool to measure that. I don't need them to say something perfectly. I just need to look at them face to face. And I can tell you in any salesperson with any product, I can tell you whether they believe in their product or not. So whenever I'm walking down my sales floor or I'm looking at different salespeople, I'm always looking at that. And I'm asking them questions like, hey, why are you selling? What do you like about the product? And whenever I hear super short-sighted, short-term beliefs, or I see them go up against barriers and walls and start to believe their customers' objections, just means one thing, they don't believe in their product. So what would you say is the biggest difference between the wealthy and the rich? Like what's the number one thing that separates the rich from the wealthy? Wealthy, well, it depends what rich is, right? Some people making a hundred grand a year is rich. In my book, making four to five to $10 million a year is rich. That's what I view as rich. Wealthy, you're a billionaire. That's, that's it. Like to me, there's nothing under a billion that categorizes you as truly wealthy. So what do I mean by that? Well, I grew up in a town that, you know, people, if you made a hundred grand in a year, you literally were considered like wealthy. Like people would drop the W word. To me today, you have four or five million dollars. That could be gone in a year or two. I have so many friends that can spend that in two to three months, right? Four to five million dollars is legitimately nothing when you are building a massive business or you're going out there and you're creating wealth. What really matters is what are you doing with your wealth as we just talked about. So when I look at wealthy, it's the ability to actually not just have a high net worth, but when I say someone has a billion dollars, like they genuinely have a billion dollars in assets. They have money that is deployed, whether it's into businesses, private equity, the stock market, real estate, different assets around the world, they have their money poured into and their money's working for them. And I truly view that as wealthy because when you have a billion dollars, there's very little things that you can do on this planet that will hurt your bank account or put you in a rough financial position. You can go and buy a $50 million yacht. You can buy a $50 million plane. You can have six houses around the world and it will not affect your billion dollar net worth. However, contrary to popular belief, a lot of people would think that about a hundred million dollars. Well, you can't have a $50 million yacht if you're worth $100 million. Why? Because it's gonna cost you over $12 million a year just to operate that. That's 12% of your net worth that you're putting into one thing that's essentially a toy that will not make you more money. So people just, you know, and, and I say this not out of arrogance, but out of when I was 16 years old, I thought a few hundred grand was a lot of money. And I wish that there was someone like me telling me like, dude, 
Don't set a $100,000 target. Don't set a million dollar tar target. Don't set a $100 million target. Knowing who Zane is and knowing that Zane wants to be the best in the world, set a multi-billion dollar target and always go bigger. All right, so you know, my last question for you, man, you, you obviously put yourself in, in a multi-million dollar property. You built a nine-figure company. Any last words of advice to the younger generation out there of entrepreneurs who may be watching this, aspiring to you know, eventually build a company like yourself and, and kind of live this lifestyle? Learn sales and never give up. Those are the only two things. Why? Because those are the two things that have changed my life. I'm an excellent communicator and that's because I learned sales. I learned the inside and the outs of communicating with the human being and when you can learn that, you will be successful no matter where you go. It's number one. Number two, it's gonna be really hard. It's gonna be a lot of roadblocks. It's gonna be a lot of people that tell you that it's not gonna work. It's gonna be a lot of times where you feel like giving up. Do not quit. As long as you learn sales and you don't quit, promise you you can get whatever you want in this world. Amazing. And uh, Zane, thank you so much for being with us today. Yeah, I appreciate really you guys coming, man. Thank time. you. And where can everybody find out more about you and what all you're working on right now? At Zane Jan on all my social media. You can find me online and or you can type in my name on Google and you'll see me. Everybody go tap in with Zane. Thank you so much for watching this video. Be sure to leave a like and subscribe for tons of amazing content and click right here to watch our full interview with Grant Cardone.